Hey there, Sit and Spin fans. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Sit and Spin. Back after a week absence of a proper show. If you hadn't heard, we had a death in the family last week. It was very sudden, surprising, and shocking. We lost our poor girl, Willow. And basically, uh, I was in no right position to do a show last week. Even though I did try to follow the old adage of the show must go on, and I did actually film a show, but it was absolutely terrible. And I couldn't put it out. And thankfully, the guys at the Rift of the Day came along and let me crash their party and said, hey, you know, since you came up with this monthly mashup idea that we've been doing anyway, why don't you join in on it? And that way you've got something you can still put out. So I did, and thanks Gino, Sean, and Pete for letting me crash the party and be a part of it. And uh, it was really fun, and you actually should check out the Riff of the Day if you haven't checked it out yet. Those guys will fill in your Ripley Daily dosage, and you actually might see me on there a little bit more too. So that'd be cool. But getting back to it, don't have the Joshua Taylor challenge this week either. That's a really hard challenge. It's proving to be much harder than I thought. I've almost got it worked out, but with everything that happened in the last week or so, and this week I've actually been suffering from like a shoulder injury, which has kind of had me sideline most of the week and in a lot of pain. Uh, but I'm working through it for you today. I will get to that soon. I apologize. Um, it's just like, really tough to narrow down like three decades worth of music into five choices. But uh, hopefully next week, unless something else comes up, and hopefully let's not have it be something bad this time. Instead, we've got a new re-release in a new format from one of my favorite bands, Better Than Ezra, one of my favorite artists, a group of artists who come out of the 90s. Um, let me, I can tell you this about Better Than Ezra. Aside from having really catchy pop songs and a great singer-songwriter and Kevin Griffin, I have never seen a band that is more fun or that has had more fun on stage. If you've ever been to a Better Than Ezra show, you know what I'm talking about. If you've never been, do yourself a favor and try and go and check one out sometime. But I've been fortunate enough to see the band on a dozen occasions, and they are super cool guys. Uh, thank you, Jim Cortez, for providing that availability to me to meet Jeff Better Than Ezra. Jim, uh, Tez, I appreciate that a lot, and it was always a good time hanging out with these guys. But enough about that. Today we're going to talk about the new 5.1 surround sound version of the band's third album, How's Your Garden Grow, which was originally released back in 1998. The idea of this album came up with a guy named Richard Labonte, who formed a new company called Music Ballet, specializing in surround sound mixes. Now, surround sound mixes were kind of like a hot little thing maybe about 10 years ago with the advent of like DVD players and people starting to get surround sound systems in their home theaters and stuff. It was a kind of cool way of like representing music in uh, a way you've never heard it before. I've got like a dozen or so of them. Some of them are really cool. Some of them are eh. This one falls in the really cool part. And basically, Levante set up his company down in uh, the Louisiana New Orleans area, which is where Better Than Ezra happened to be from. And so it kind of was a serendipitous thing that they should hook up and decide to work on this record together. So he approached the band backstage at a show in 2011 and said, Hey, I got this idea. I'd like to remix the album in 5.1. And, and I think that your album lends itself really well to that. And the band were very receptive to it. And it's true because this album was pretty much a pretty kind of radical departure for the band for the time. They were pretty much known for doing straight up alternative rock pop songs and this record kind of experimented with drum loops and electronic sounds and the lead singer Kevin Griffin basically felt like at the time he was going in to record the album like I don't want to make just another guitar pop record. I want to do something different, something that's out there. So the band came up with this album, and they kind of had a little bit of carte blanche to do it because they'd had two previously successful albums, so the record label didn't really even check in on them when they were making the record, and uh, when they got it, they were probably going, what the hell is this? And I admit, the first time I heard the album, I was kind of like, wow, what are these guys doing? This is, this is really different for them, and it took me a while for the album to really grow on me. And oddly enough, the album really only had one really successful single, which was At The Stars. Howie Day used to like to cover that song a lot. And the song you're listening to right now, One More Murder, kind of charted a little bit, was featured in some TV shows, and was on, I think was on one of the X-Files soundtracks as well. But none of the other songs really charted off it. They released Like It Like That, didn't do anything. Which isn't to say that it's not a great album. There's plenty of great tunes like Under You, uh, Live Again, Happy Day Mama, Particle, which are all like fan favorites. And in this new 5.1 surround setting, it's really amazing. Like right now, I've only got like the regular stereo version on it, but it was an album produced by Malcolm Byrne, so that should give you a little idea as to like what was going on with this. 
but in the new 5.1 setting, man, it's just amazing. You actually feel like you are in the studio with them and just the surround sound effects that are coming at you, little things over here or there. Uh, the band, there's a cool video I'm going to attach with this that will tell you a lot more in depth about the story of this record and if you're interested more in this at all, check out the video. But they were basically saying how there were all these little parts that they kind of forgotten they'd recorded because they just got buried in the regular mix and they come out and come to life again in this new version. So if you're a Better Than Ezra fan at all, you got a surround sound system and this sounds like something that's cool to you, by all means go to the band's website, I'll list the link for that to you, and check out the new 5.1 surround version of How's Your Garden Grow, which is really, really sweet, subtitled A Series of Nocturnes, or other words, Night Songs. That's what I got for you this week. Next week, I'm going to try to have the Joshua Taylor Challenge. Be sure to check out the accompanying links for this more info. And uh, say goodbye to Norm. He's just sleeping, hanging out with me. I think the Rocket Dog is going to join me a lot more on these little podcasts because I need that little something to help fill that void of Miss Willow being gone. Uh, thanks also to everybody who had very kind words to say last week in regards to Willow's passing. Really, very, very much appreciate it. You guys are awesome, and uh, I very much appreciate having you in my lives. This has run on way too long, but we will talk to you later on next time on Sit and Spin. Thanks for tuning in.